<laughs> You're literally recording right now. Mm-mm. That, yeah. What is, no, what is that? His, vi- his camera is going. Oh. Hey, everybody. Right, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. We still have a podcast. I am Jeff Pearson. I used to be a Christian. Now I'm an atheist. I'd be uh, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing, Zach? <laughs> I'd be speaking, but I have no idea what episode we were on. It's episode 220. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and how how you do how you, <laughs> deep in the armpit you? of California? Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that we just we know no matter what happens we need to make sure we put it through the goalposts on the entry. Yes, yes we do. Good evening, fellas. Good evening. Good evening, world. It is. And it's been forever. Good evening, world. Hold on as I pour myself. Wait, let's drink. listen to it. Let's okay, listen. Let's see if we can get to it. Let's see. Moment is that. Oh, jeez. Oh, I, I just poured, I poured, it, poured part it all of over pants. myself. All over. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it worked. I definitely got. We talked over it as well. Beer on my pants. That was cool. The beer, though, that I'm I'll drinking. Try. Is Dionysus super funkadelic, but this one is double fruited spicy goza um, with apricots and jalapenos. I love jalapenos, and when it's topped off with a little goza, that just is extra special. Yes, it really goes uh, well. <laughs> Did you? Hey, yo. hey, you're not a dad, are you? It, this is this is the um, well, not this version of it specifically but this is the beer that that um, converted me to a to sour beer okay boys it's been a while we need to cheers this cheers it just imagine Woo. if you didn't hear that take a taste of that spicy so jeff you renounced your faith is that what i heard <laughs> i renounced my faith is that what i heard when i entered the podcast it was you? i want to say it was on hold it was on hold <laughs> no we're not i did not renounce my faith I have renounced um, my, the treble in my voice, though. It's just only bringing the bass these days. Oh, man. I know. You sound sultry. What's happening? <laughs> my wife's like, are you sick? I'm like, why do I sound sexy? I uh, I kind of want to sit on you right now. <laughs> sit on you? I do not know where that's going. I don't know what going. that means, but for some reason, I, I just hope feel I the, have a football. <laughs> I just feel the need to just like be a part of you. Oh, tackle me. <laughs> Tackle me in this. <laughs> I no, I think I I, I don't want to I don't want to go into why my voice is so deep, uh, but it is. And uh, you know, I'm ready to do radio. Back in the 1980s, uh, I could give uh, who was the guy who ran Kiss FM, Rick Rick D's in the morning. D's in the morning, yeah, I can give him run for his money. <clears throat> and Howard, anyway, D's nuts. Uh, <laughs> I should have been. Uh, I don't think they did that. He should have come out with a product that you could buy. It was like almonds and cashews. Yeah, macadamias. Oh uh, yeah, with have sea you, salt. Have you tried Rick D's nuts? <laughs> in the morning, on a <laughs> only in the morning. It's a delicious morning treat. Anyway, uh, it has been a while. It's been since uh, Hawaii. Uh, that we actually got together. This is foreign to be in the studio. It's been a long time. Feels weird, doesn't it? It a does bit. feel weird. I realized when I put my drink down, uh, like we we have not. I have not been here for uh, two months, six weeks, seven weeks at least. Uh, it's at least two months. Yeah, I think it's at least two months. Okay, I so I'm, I was shooting short, and I yeah, I laid up. But yeah, it's you been usually a while. do that, Jeff. Quit laying up. <laughs> I hate that. Go long. Yeah, just hit it over the pin. A little backspin. Well, my wife just accused me of taking one of her ciders. Did you want one of you guys take one? Ciders? No. No. I know. I told her no. Uh, I'm actually going to try to find out the exact last time that we podcasted in here. Oh, my gosh. August 9th. Wait. August 9th. Yeah. It's late November. Yeah. What? Oh my gosh. That's We're closer crazy. to three months than Holy not. Holy mackerel. We exist. Well, we took gosh. a quarter off. In- we took summer off and then we came back August 9th and then we took another hiatus and went to Hawaii. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was an extended observance of um, Scott. 
That's, that's what we'll right. say. That's what happened. That's what happened. Scott left and everything got scrambled. And Scott is actually in Montana you to the long term listener. You can, you can vouch for him. Uh, he's actually in Montana. Actually, I don't know that, but he did. He sent the one picture from a bar with a good view. That was a long time ago. It looked like it Montana, but that's all we have. He could AI that. You could get that from Yelp. He's probably in Riverside. He probably is. Milk and goats. Hey, how about this, though? Um, I have a, a clip we can play to jump off of uh, from a comedian on Netflix, but... Um, Should we just catch and, up a little bit? Andy, you've got a little... You've you've had some drama health-wise in the family. What's going on? Yeah, that was my comment uh, deep in the, the armpit of California. I was there last week. My mom... Um, Is that Bakersfield or Visalia? By Bakersfield. Vice uh, Bakersfield has been going downhill in the last few years. I think Visalia has been uh, on the upswing. On the, on the upswing, yeah. Mm. Visalia nicer. Bakersfield worse. Well, our o- old we have an old friend, old Greg. He uh, somewhere around. Uh, I guess it would be the second armpit was Modesto. He says it's just it's not a good place to hang. Oh, out. Modesto's rough. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, my mom's family. been, she's been in, in and out of ER with like this weird headache thing that um, like intense 10 out of 10 migraine. Well, we thought it was a migraine, but it's been going on for almost three weeks now. So migraines typically will last a couple of days. Three week migraine? Or yeah, just often, off and on? It, I mean, it ramps up and down oh, like within gosh. a day. So she'll, it'll be down for, down to like a three during the day for a few hours and then it can spike back up to seven, eight or nine. And so, um, so I decided we were going up to Visalia for Thanksgiving anyway on Wednesday. So I said, Hey, why don't I just come up a day early and I'll see if I can help out. I thought it was just going to come up and help out around the house to do stuff. All right. And I got there and realized that there was just all of this medical, uh, there's all this medical related stuff that they needed help with, which was basically navigating the medical, the health healthcare system. Guys, I'm telling you, it is, it is unfixable. Like it is, it Wait, is. No, no, that's not true. Obama fixed it. That's right. The, the healthcare system is unfixable. It is like, it is bulldoze the thing and just start something new. You didn't get Obamacare less? What? Uh, <laughs> it's my, continue. It, it's, sidebar on that and whatever you feel about everything is so political, but I feel like at this point there's such a weird corporate, there's a weird private and public partnership and everything is so intertwined that it's just a total hot mess. It would be better off to either go like full private. Yeah. Which I would, I'd prefer if the marketplace, like I think costs would come down, but better than what we're at now, it would be, better to be just full public just single payer it took it's a hot mess it took a full day for me to be able to get and i mean like start in the morning get done at like five o'clock a full day just to get her records from the hospital to her primary care physician and an mri scheduled and i'm having to like triple check everybody's work i'm having to (laughs) at one point I went to the hospital because there's no one to call at the hospital. So I went there, go to the front desk. Hey, I need to get my, my mom was in the ER last night. We need to get her records transferred to her primary care. Oh, okay. Um, no, we can't help you. Go to ER, go to ER, talk to three people there or two people there. Uh, oh no, we don't have that. You got to go to medical records. Okay. That's in another building. I walk over to this other building and they, you Kaiser or something. Well, Kaiser, it, technically, Kaiser? I think it would have been better. Oh, no, okay. No, this okay. is like Medicare. Um, so anyway. Yikes. I have to resort to some light flirting at, with the the girl who's in charge of the records. Did you use my deep yes. voice? Yeah, I did. I was like, Just a little bit of- that is a <laughs> lovely blouse. You show a little top chest? Yeah, I did. Uh, Zach is pulling his shirt down and... V-neck for his breast. I, I texted my wife. I was like, hey, uh, apologies, but I, I'm having to do a little light flirting here to get my mom's records oh released. My gosh. And um, like I'm six foot five. And so she 
she's she seems to be like the person who can help me. Great. Okay. Uh, and and and, I, and she goes, well, your your mom needs to sign this paper, and my mom is not available to sign the paper. I said, can I sign it instead for her? And she's like, no, I'm sorry. And I go, okay, well, I actually don't need the physical copy here. Just just get it to the primary fi- uh, doctor. Oh yeah, they call. I can just get it send send it straight to him. Awesome. I call her primary care physician. Of course, this woman's phone is like cutting in and out, getting every other word. And I'm like, hey, I think your phone's messed up. She's like, nope, I've been making calls all day long. Sassy. She was a sassy woman. And uh, mm. I'll let you fill in the blank. Yeah, we'll just leave that to the listener. And so I go, okay, well, here's the number I need you to call. I'm here with Maggie right now. I look at Maggie, smile a little bit, twinkle in my eye. Uh, and she can help. She can send you the records of her right away. Okay, fine. I'll call her. And so <laughs> get off the phone. <laughs> get off the phone. And um, I say, hey, Maggie, she's going to call you right now. And Maggie goes, great. Um, you don't need to stick around. It's fine. I'll take care of it. And I said, I trust you. I don't trust her, though. So I'm just going to hang out and stick around for a little while. 15 minutes, no call. I call back to the sassy primary care physician assistant. Hey, uh, were you able to get a, in touch with him? I tried calling four times. There was nobody there. And I'm looking at Maggie. I'm like, hey, Maggie, did your phone ring? Nope. What's the number that you have again? She reads it off. It's right. I said, nope, that, that number's right. Go ahead and try calling again. Guess what, guys? After I called her back to tell her to give her the right number, the phone rang. It was amazing. Weird. After I double checked with her. Oh, a little sidebar. As I was getting frustrated here, I have this, I have the woman in primary care on the phone. I'm looking at the person who can give her the records. And I just go, hey, can I just give you the phone? Can I just give that to you? And she goes, I'm sorry. You can't. Yeah. I'm not allowed to. I'm like, the system is shattered. It's, can you can you just put it on speakerphone? Yeah, like uh, you could just talk to her right now. She's right here. I can connect I you guys. Hold the phone. No, sorry, we can't do that. She has to call direct. So she finally calls. Amazing. Her voice isn't real. No, unless she calls direct. I, yeah, who knows? It's just some lady that yeah. I hired to yeah. get my mom's records sent to a primary. Why care Why would physician. you do that, Andy? Because that's, that's where a, the money's at, guys. That's a good point. I don't know if you knew that. When I'm complaining about all this, I'm like, I need to, I need to be selling health insurance, <laughs> dude. I'll tell you this, man. Everybody's fat in Bakersfield. They're all fat. Everybody. There's no, there's no exception. They're all morbidly obese. Like I'm worried for you. You are a heart attack walking. Oh, maybe they, maybe yeah. there's some, maybe there's some linemen in there, dude. For the NFL. It's in line women. San Antonio will be jealous. <laughs> Ooh, there's a call out. Yeah, baby. it's one of those things. Pendulum swings. Like there's there's the unhealthy version of being fit and like the health industry, health nut. There's a bad version of that. But in the pendulum swing to say, hey, it's okay where you're at, and let's make incremental progress. It just swings all the way over towards like the far side of the other way is dude it's it's and it was is healthy at any size which isn't true no dude the, and, and no it doesn't shocker. mean you're a crappy person just means like you can take steps to to feeling better it doesn't mean you're gonna look like oh what's that vegan guy that's just cut i'm i am purely giving an observation everybody in bakersfield is morbidly obese that's all that's just my observation i'm not giving judgment otherwise yeah Rick Roll, that's who I was thinking of. Rick Roll is this vegan guy, runner, super athlete, just yeah. like 2% body fat. Shush, dude. His name is Never Rick Roll. Never gonna give you yeah. up. Never gonna let Keep you down. That. Or is it Rich? It's Never gonna roll. It's not, roll. it's not Rick Roll. Dude. Google me right. My device is queued up for something else. Um, Hold on. Rick or Rich Roll, vegan, super athlete. He's like 4% body fat. Is it Richard? Could it be Dick Roll? That's, well, that happens. <laughs> That'll happen. I mean, that happens. Call me Dick. Uh, he. Hold on. Let me see if I can find. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I did find. We it is a guy. Yeah. 
But this I, is named Rick Roll or are, Rich Are you guys Roll? surprised? I don't just make shit up on the podcast. Well, allegedly. Just the Bible stuff, Scott. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> Pointing to air. Yep, there he is. There. Rick Roll. It works. <laughs> I got him! <laughs> yeah. So this is perfect. Uh, so he is ripped. That's, that's equivalent to insurance He's a vegan. these days. It's a Rick Roll. The You've point, been screwed. The point is, like, this guy is ripped, and um, it doesn't mean you need to get to that level where, no, that's when you're beautiful is when you look like him. It's like, no, whatever version of your body, all God's bodies are beautiful. There's a healthiest version of that body. Dude, I'm not... And it might not look like Rick Roll or Rich Roll. Um, I'm not saying I'm in fantastic shape. I'm not in great great shape. All I'm saying is you're tall enough to where everything stretches out, dude. It was it was like what do you sit over? What do you lean over? It's like this bah. whole city is gonna die. <laughs> so anyway, yes. Fortunately, Can I was I able get to like eight inches of your body to stretch out. Which body? eight inches? <laughs> uh, Sorry, Jeff. You can't do that. I mean, Andy's not denying it. Technically. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess so. Uh, but I was able to help him with other stuff around the house too, like Jesus. you know, naming Alexa devices. Turns out, oh yeah. Also, their internet and phone went out at the same time, which when I happened to be there too. So th- that was fantastic. But yeah. th- you know, it was one of those things like didn't really go out. Intermittent cuts okay, in and out. Stop with the conspiracy theory. It's great. It's super fun, <laughs> which drives uh, non technically savvy people absolutely bonkers. Because they're like, we didn't do anything. Now it stopped working. Now it is working. Like, I'm sorry, guys. But mom and dad are in a better place. Whoa, no. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Andy, I'm sorry. I came out wrong. They're uh, they're doing well. Their internet works now. <laughs> their internet works. <laughs> so things At are least better. their internet works. So, you know, I think we can call it a win. Oh my God. Yeah. Poor, I felt bad for them, though. It was, it was rough. They're, and and they're how just, are you, the human, holding up? Um, Sorry, I am. That's great. B minus. <laughs> I'm a B minus. A B minus. Well, that's passing, Zach. Um, if I could add, if I could just be C plus plus. I'm just kidding. Things I mean, I'll bump you up to a B minus. It's okay. Yeah, B minus B. Maybe B minus That's sounds good. too good. Then I guess I should be putting myself no, closer. Things C. are solid. Maybe C minus is better. <laughs> I can't imagine ever saying I'm an A plus. I've got. There's always too much shit going on in the world. Now things with the family are going well. Yeah, having teenage daughters, so far so good. This but, week. Yeah. It's a day. You're very day. rattly, by the way. Your microphone's very rattly tonight. Am I? I'm, I'm sitting up, and I'm. I might be rocking a little. Yeah, bit. you are. You're rocking like docking. Timely reference. Let's see if that helps. Okay. The situation. Well, anything else, Jeff? Besides your, I gave up my Tesla. Oh. I gave up my Tesla. It's been a while. For Lent. <laughs> I gave up my Tesla, and I went back to a Prius, dude. I'm so happy. It's uh, it's a big life change because I can just fall asleep driving in my Tesla, but not in the Prius. You gotta stay alert, man. <laughs> Turns out you gotta drive these things. <laughs> Jesus, I'm like, yes, this is not good. Uh, hey, everybody out there, our listener, um, singular, it Tesla may work for you. It worked for me for a dream car, but man, I had a I had a Prius from two thousand eight. Until 2020, 440,000 miles. And then I'm like, I'm getting a Tesla. And for one year, it was my dream car. But I sold my Tesla X to CarMax and went and got a Prius before I even sold the Tesla. And I got a 2018 Prius and I am ecstatic. I'm like, I know that this car will not function in a negative way like the Tesla did, replacing but axles they don't, and stuff. Yeah, the axle thing, if you don't know, it's like when you get a Tesla, it's super fun. And so you're heavier on the accelerator. Yeah. You're not paying for gas. Well, they market it like, 
Oh, Gun it, boys. You can go zero to 60 in three seconds and or whatever. And you can. Yeah. And it's awesome. 17 times. That's how many <laughs> that's, times you can do it. That's exact. And Tesla literally ago? told me, oh, yeah, if you accelerate, the weight of the car will put so much pressure on the axle that it can't take it. And that's called standard mode. We put you in chill mode. So after replacing three axles in three years at $1,500 a pop, uh, yeah, that didn't happen. I even ran into a guy who had a 2016. He's like, I've replaced three axles. I'm like, oh, I've replaced three axles too. He's like, your car's only three years old. Anyway, well, I'm, now in, I'm now in a Prius. That's because you have drop foot. <laughs> I'm now in a Prius and it's simple. I love it. I just, Toyota just does things better when it comes to economy and you're a Toyota man. I That's am. Who you are. We're becoming a Toyota family. My son's got a, a Toyota truck. I told my wife. She, my wife was on the, but she was on like the edge of like, okay, maybe we should turn to my Volvo and I'll get a Prius. I'm like, she's like his and hers. I'm like, this is fantastic. And then she, she backed off the ledge. Gosh darn it. Well, is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. She likes her Volvo. She's like, well, when I drove your Prius, I, then I drove my car. I like the Volvo. Thanks. I'm getting sympathy chortles from Andy. Chortles? Chortles. Anyway. Uh, Dirty chortles. Prius good. Tesla, fantastic, awesome company. Oh, I'm so glad you can talk about your car problems when Israel and Hamas and everything. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Aren't I, you a supporter? <laughs> of what? Yeah. What are you a supporter of? I'm Take just, your stand right now. Tell the people <laughs> yeah, what. Dude, I'm just an American. <laughs> I'm just a public school teacher in California. Oh, now I know where you stand. Yeah. yeah. I'm super liberal. I'm going to make my hair pink next week and then purple the week after. All right. Well, do, doing both, man. Next uh, next episode, do, we'll be hosting. Uh, the lead host will be Karen Pearson. Yeah. Hey, guys. So wait for me next week i'll be here hey i got a caveat though karen pearson or <laughs> karen in general it, it can be a Dude, can i be karen pearson it, it can be a rightist week? as well try, I, try I know, it again i know plenty of plenty hey guys of... hey zach stop mansplaining to me okay wait hold on don't manspread while you mansplain <laughs> wait okay that's really that's so wrong stop it he you're stop spreading your knees he apart. sounds like kyle dunnigan <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <it's a> caddy <laughs> daddy. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! I love caddy daddy. Sorry. Uh, what are you consuming? Is you this be, good podcasting? You should be consuming Kyle down again. I don't know if it's good. Hey, well, it's good to be together. Okay, let's though. go. It's good to be together. Let's go. Let's let's just jump. Can, Zach, jump. What do you got I don't for know. us? We could just talk. No, we sh- could just talk. Shut up, Andy. Hey, we could just talk. I'm gonna start playing this. And right. then, unless you have something to talk about right now, I just am wondering how we're doing because it's been a while. No, oh, well, I'm not well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then no, let's I'm go. Jo- I'm joking. I'm I'm fighting demons. Is they're on the left? They're on the right. I thought the angel was on the left. Demon was on the right. Is this independent Trump? <laughs> There's demons everywhere. On my left <clears throat> and my right. Joe's over there. Some say I can't do it. <laughs> you know, some say. I, uh, I'm navigating. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm traveling because you got, because your Tesla doesn't do it for you anymore. Uh, no, I'm going to, uh, it is just difficult having four, one, one adult child, three. Okay. Let's just forget about the boys. Dude, having two girls, having girls in general is like, it is a all day, all night war of everything. It's like, hey, girls, you need to have your phones. You know, that 10, narrows it down at ten o'clock. You know, on the in the kitchen, and uh, you know, do uh, I? I can't turn to my phone because my alarm <laughs> clock broke, and I need my phone to. I'm not going to be on the phone. Jesus. And then the next day it's like, can you pick me up lunch because I'm your favorite? And, uh, uh will you just at least send me money? Like my, my boys are, 
are low maintenance. Well, boys in general, low maintenance. Girls are off the charts, high maintenance. I love them. I'm their father. It's fantastic. But I have no, my girls, I have no idea because girls keep secrets well and they don't show their cards and you both have girls and it's yeah. like, uh, I have no idea what's going on. I hope that they're sharing being honest with me, but in the end, I'm like my youngest girls, she's like, okay. I'm like, you lied to me. She's like, yeah, but I'm like, I'm your Jesus. favorite. Remember? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, Can I have money for lunch? Yeah. Could I just have a Porsche 944? And I'm like, it's, what? It's it, older. <laughs> Serious. I'm just, I'm like, ah, and then you're fighting the, the like South Orange County, like super wealthy, you know, families that they're all, all of my girls are, they're just friends with just gabillionaires. I'm like, I need, I need to get a job. My 14 year old just applied for a job. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you, you can't working a- for a hedge fund? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, well, it's sweet. I'll be your assistant. Uh, no, it, she went and applied for a job. My 14 year old applied for a position at a restaurant. I'm like, uh, you can't work until you're 16. But what, what are you doing anyway? She's like, I think they'll hire me. Like, what do you need? What do you need a job for? I need money because everywhere my friends go, we buy stuff and we, we need a shop and we buy stuff. I'm like, whatever. She needs to learn how to be cool and not buying stuff all the time or find new friends. (laughs) That ain't going to happen. Or get her friends to buy her stuff. Do you, would you describe your, uh, all of a sudden it's really personal. Annie and I both have two girls. Yeah. We all have two girls. Whoa. Whoa. Good thing Scott's gone. Yeah, that's why we kicked him out. Two girl dads. Wait. What are we going to say? Wait. I don't know. I don't have the same. I I wouldn't describe, unless I'm the ostrich. I'm dad ostrich with my head in the sand. sand, buddy. Um, I I wouldn't describe it the same, quite the same way. Um, The fear, there's plenty of fear with the... 14 to 16 and 17 and you know 20 sh- shortly out of high school in, in the next couple of years there's plenty of fear and anxiety over that um but just trying trying to maintain lines of communication and um it's not it's not perfect but i don't know <laughs> it's sad. i don't have the contrast i guess if i contrasted it with them, my my boy puppy He's two years old, still puppy. Then yes, things are way more complex. But you you are contrasting your daughters with your sons. Hit the cough button, G D. I'm sorry, dude. That's all right. That's why we gave you a cough button. I'm yeah. dying. It's <laughs> my last podcast. This is it. It's my last <clears throat> supper podcast. I mean, the struggle is real. Girl dad is a real struggle, um, for sure. And it's super rewarding. And uh, that is it. It is. It is super rewarding. There's. I have learned that there are waves that this stuff comes and goes in. And all of the parenting that I learned or I thought I learned up until that point went out the door and none of it counted for anything anymore. And so I had to relearn how to become a dad for teenage girls. And. Um, Cause the, I mean, you've talked about it before too. You've mentioned like the dad tricks that we had when they were 12 and under don't work anymore. No, no. So it's, it's, it's a weird spot of, I think I've noticed them being, feeling a little bit torn themselves, like between being a kid and being an adult and like this tension that they're bouncing back and forth between. And some of it is them like pushing back and wanting to establish themselves. Like that's where I've noticed our girls having this like drawing weird lines and then like making, I mean, it's not a weird line, but the idea of I want to have a job. I want my own stuff. I want to like be able to make my own decisions. Um, It feels like a lot of times that's a muscle that they're trying to exercise or learn how to use. And it's, it's like baby rattlesnakes, you know, sometimes 
the bite. Way too much venom. Like, oh, I've got it. I'm going for it. And you're like, okay. Uh, you're you're going through the motions a little too much. Dial it back a little bit. Here's where normal is. Yep. Uh, I don't know. That's that's the way that I kind of experience it. And it's got to be weird for them too, where they grew up. And man, the the magical age of like post taught like even toddler where every everything in the world is magic and you get to show them everything and everything for the first they time see for the first time yeah it, everything is magic and man i we have friends where that have kids in that age and i'm like reliving it and getting all the nostalgic feels how'd you get that quarter out from my ear <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes i fell oh back there's no there's no quarter in my ear how'd you get it i learned that from god herself <laughs> um but uh, but growing up and as they are maturing into this, like you start to go through puberty and you're, you're growing up all of a sudden they're probably realizing like, Oh, my dad's not always right. My mom's not always right. And that's Maybe your be- kids. <laughs> <laughs> now you're the ostrich, Andy. <laughs> um, it's gotta be weird of like a little bit of a rug pull, like, Oh, I see things a little bit differently than my parents. And even if those things aren't voiced and you don't know exactly what those things are as a parent and uh, to the child and vice versa, like that's, that's part of the equation where they're realizing I've had those. And also I'm realizing like, Oh, my magic skills don't work anymore. Time to try to relearn things. Dude, I've had the talks with the girls where they've mentioned, I'll paraphrase a little bit, but like, some regret in growing up like they're they're starting to see more of the world and more of how things are complicated they're eating that fruit of the knowledge of good yeah evil. it is kind of like it is that basically and i don't remember if it was gwen or lila but one of them had kind of expressed a little bit of regret of like growing up and and being like i don't like this i don't like that I'm now aware of these things that were never on my radar before. And they're aware of things at a level that at their age, we weren't aware of. We weren't aware of like, they're, they're exposed to so much stuff from the world. And I'm not saying from the world, like in the Christian way of like the world versus God or whatever, <laughs> but just aware of everything. Dude, potentially. I, re- I have to have a stand on like wh- whether Israel versus Pal- like, Kids have to deal with that stuff in a way that we never did. I remember doing a science report. It was in my chemistry class. On was Jeff your teacher? It was. Jeff, you remember this. Uh, it was on the internet. I did, like, we got to give some sort of report. My report was like, hey, everybody, here's what the internet is. I gave the report and I wasn't really sure what it was. Even after giving the report, I'm like, I I still don't really know what the internet is. But you really did a good job. I gave you an A. And you really just let it just like tw- like it looks good enough. He's he seems like he knows what he's talking about. Some light flirting gets you through life. I've learned that if I've learned nothing else. And back then I yes, gay. Yeah, you had the pink hair and everything. But but nothing the, else where a deep V just in the general deepest of V's you that can was see questionable. my navel but uh, <laughs> but it is the information overload and Gosh. humans are not designed to carry this much God no information yeah I'm I'm actually hopeful I think humans adapt well and I think we're in a transitionary period in a lot of different ways and uh it's a problem of progress for sure. Social media, there's some good, like Jonathan Haidt, Coddling of the American Mind. Um, and he's got some blog posts too. And what's the other book? The Righteous Mind is a great book. of Just dealing with how to interact with people on a level that you've never had to before. Because I, I think... Anxiety and depression are through the roof for a lot of people. So fun. And part of that is the exp- you're just being exposed to everything, Too much. All, everything everywhere all at once. It's too much. There's man. so many people that just cannot withstand all of that. 
I, it's I fun like, to. I and think I'm. One, I feel they. like I'm one of those people. Yeah. Like I, I don't do well with it. It's fun to watch people implode. <laughs> well, I don't want that. Enjoy oh. the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this is so fun. It's like Hunger Games. Dude, I, oh, you just your head exploded right there. Yep. Yeah, that stuff weighs on me. And it prevents you from thinking, though. Too, if you're if you're juggling so many different ideas, and your your fight or flight response is sort of always at a level where it shouldn't be. It's not all the way dialed up, but you're. It subverts your ability to think reasonably. Well, and it's coming so quickly that I don't think we have our a time to like pause and process and think. Okay, I just heard someone's opinion on something. What do I think about that? Instead, it's just inundated, ongoing stream someone, of voices. S- someone's opinion. Now I need to have a, an opinion right now that's going to solve that issue. It, the only, th- but it's never your own. It's, no, it's it's built we, off it's somebody else's. The next crap. person's and the next person's and right. the next but we, voice. But we pretend it's our own. I only so in this, I think like okay, we didn't grow up with this, and I think of you know our kids, girls. My boys, I think. What was it like when the printing they, press was invented? Yeah, Jeff? right. Like, how did that how work? Are, sh- shut up, Zach. Gutenberg. Uh, I think. How are? How do kids even take all of this in? I I was looking at my daughter on her phone, and and she was just scrolling and clicking. Like, but there was, it was like, it was a feed. It was just a constant feed. She was just searching for like, oh, who's who's talking? Who's I'm like, good God, that is forever. That'll go on forever. Somebody in her Dopamine friend hits, zone man. is going, yeah, is going to be talking about something. And she's sending, I don't know, pictures of her, her friends. Like, oh, I just picked them up in the from somebody's house, and they're and they're taking pictures of just one picture, and they're like sending it to friends. I'm like. This is nonstop. How I don't even. There's nothing that feels like you're able to relax and settle and actually. Well, live. do you guys feel like you have that? Uh, do you feel like you have the habit of digital input under control in your own life? I don't feel like I do. I can I can tell when I'm just like oh downtime. I'll just look I'm at my a, phone, dude. I'm. Tans, I'm a crack addict when it comes to the phone. Yeah. It doesn't matter what. Instagram, the stock market, just picking stock up Stock market on Instagram. <laughs> picking up the phone just to pick up the phone. Like, why am I even picking up the, my crack pipe? Dude. I have I, no crack to smoke right now. I'm all out of crack. <laughs> but you do. Yeah. I'll yeah. go find it somehow, somewhere on the internet. Even the way they design it, like the instant scroll. It used to be like you pulled down and it was kind of a satisfying. You pulled a refresh. Oh, That's God. like a slot machine trick. Oh, they they study the brain. They know they know what's happening. And or so if, just one more reel. Yeah, one more you, reel. Yeah. If you haven't clicked on anything one on more certain talk apps or tick, all of a sudden it's like, hey, you've got something on this app. And I click on the app. I'm like, that was stupid. Mm-hmm. Delete. Like I don't even, But but they get you there. Swiping. Since we're talking about technology, let's uh, do it. The uh, come on, Zach. I was watching Pete Holmes' new special uh, on Netflix. It's called "I Am Not for Everyone." Pete Holmes has a very successful podcast called "You Made It Weird," but towards the beginning of his act, he does a joke about how the government is listening to us through the phones and how they just decide to tell us, "Yeah, that's what we're doing," and nobody cares, and how yeah. ridiculous that is. Big brother, whatever. Okay, this is going to get crass. I'm not going to do exactly how he does it, but you've been warned. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Um, <laughs> he instantly, like, it almost seems out of context at first. He just starts yelling, I want to buy a dildo. I want to buy a dildo. He just starts yelling it over and over again as people are laughing because it's so ridiculous. He's like, shush, I want to buy a dildo. And he, he just keeps doing it and building on it and building on it and building on it. And then he does it for an uncomfortable length of time Yeah. to where you're like, all right, we get it. You want to buy one. Yeah. And then he closes it with like, enjoy those ads. Enjoy those Instagram ads. Oh. I kid you not. Did you really? Uh, not on Instagram, but on. All the porn sites you were going to? X, oh. <laughs> 
the, the porn sites had everything. On X, I've never gotten an ad like this. On your porn sites? <laughs> I've never gotten an ad for X on the porn sites. Uh, formerly known as Twitter. I feel like we're contractually <laughs> ad- obligated you. to say that. <laughs> By um, Elon Musk. I'm on the, the bros Twitter feed just like we never post. You can reach us there. People. I saw you. I saw you there. You can reach us there. <laughs> but uh, oh my God. hardly ever post. I'm scrolling and there posted? is an ad for uh, a pleasure device. And I'm like, it worked. Dude. It worked. And I, I, I'm not surprised. A pleasure device. It was a little bit funny. That but makes a pleasure device. Um, well, it's it actually, actually has the ability to go in both or All right. <clears throat> so you have a little clip to play? Are you going to try to get this uh, purchase purchasing <laughs> device, this purchase, we may purchase get a simple s- device on our listeners? And we by may the get way, another sponsor did off you this. Have, I have a clip if you don't. I think, I think Paul, <coughs> biblical Paul, Sorry. everything is allowable among uh, two married people. So Thank you, Paul. If you if you stumble upon an, an ad for a certain device and you want to engage with that with your partner, you know, do it. Uh, your partner, whatever Jesus. you know, whatever that means. You, you have a partner. Stop it. You just use the Lord's name in vain. Jeez. Again. Yeah, he's mad at me, and he's the one using all Jesus the time. Name in vain. You always Jeez. say which one is making Jesus, baby Jesus, cry? Yeah, Jeez. which one? So mine is not related to that stuff. Mine is Pete does. This is from his special, and he does go on to talk about atheism versus non-atheism in a kind of fun way. Oh, let's hear it. That could be fun. Let's hear the fun way and fun funness. <laughs> Closer. I believe in God. Relax. <laughs> I believe in God, but I hate when other people believe in God. Can you relate to that? Like, I love my God, but sometimes people know I'm a spiritual person. They'll come out of the shadows after the show like, I believe in God. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this, a murder-suicide? Get back in your lift. I don't- Stop me anytime you want to comment. Get <laughs> back in your lift. I want to talk. <laughs> but every comedian is an atheist. Almost every single comedian I know is an atheist. And I got to tell you, from where I'm standing, it looks so fucking cool. <laughs> Atheism, the cigarette of beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> Just leaning on your motorcycle like, you think there's something going on here? Get real! <laughs> <laughs> It is the motorcycle of philosophy. It's just like, born alone, die alone, ride alone. It's like that. <laughs> and religion is like the station wagon I got from my mom. Like, hang, hang, honk if you love Jesus. It's just not as cool. <laughs> but I personally, I'm so tired of comedians burning down a straw man, making fun of people who believe in God, being like, do you really think a talking snake gave a naked lady in a poo? <laughs> I'm like, come on. It's a metaphor, Ricky. Yeah, Ricky. I love how Ricky Gervais, he's basically, uh, basically directly calling out Ricky Gervais, who is a, a comedian who's a notorious For atheist. calling other people out, too, on, yeah. on everything. Yeah, yeah. And I like Ricky Gervais, but he's one of those guys like, um, uh, what's the, I was going to say Sam Smith. Sam Harris, not the singer. Sam Rick Harris, Roll. Rick Roll. You guys never Googled me right for reels on that one. But. I looked up Rick Roll. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but some of these, what I love about this is that some of these, the atheists that react to the caricatured version of any belief in God, and certainly have, there are people that believe the story that that's exactly what happened. A snake convinced a naked woman to bite an apple and and pete holmes is more of the he's a little out there if you're looking for him to be the new celebrity christian mascot you know he might not be your cup of tea because he's out there but i do love his breakdown which continues uh, you guys have any thoughts so far i don't know who was the old christian a- mascot what's that who was the old christian mascot rick warren yeah, his stand up was great though. You should have seen it. <laughs> I like him at the Brea okay, Improv the okay. most. I think he moved to Bakersfield. <laughs> What's up with God? <laughs> What's the deal? What is the deal with God? Comments on atheism and his 
Yeah. Continue. Good talk. It's it's entertaining so far. It's not controversial enough for me to. Always true. Sometimes really happen. Do you understand? Like my God is not an old man in the sky. It's a metaphor for a mystery that absolutely transcends all categories of human thought, including being and non-being. But that's too many words for the back of a quarter. <laughs> that's Joseph Camp. I got all the best teachers later in life. Like Barry Taylor, the road manager for ACDC said, God is the name of the blanket we put over the mystery to give it a shape. Shouldn't I have learned that in church? (laughs) Why am I learning this from Barry Taylor, the road manager for ACDC? I like that. God is the name of the blanket we put over the mystery. To give it a shape. To give it a shape. I, I, when I heard that, that like blew my mind a little bit. And it's depressing too, because when he says, shouldn't I have learned that in church? Yeah. It's like, yes. But so often churches are, some churches are so interested in being, fighting the culture war and defeating the enemies of God. We're, we're so busy with like, no absolute truth and like we have to prove it and prove it and prove it and we can show why and here are all the details and just when you drill down into a lot of our beliefs about the reality of life there's a lot more unknown than known and a lot more mystery and that's okay it's weird that that so many people are not okay with that though i i don't like the okay i disagree speak freely with the idea that we that god is it's like oh there's the mystery and so we just put god there as the mystery it's like there's mystery in all of like how did this all happen well god god created this so it's almost like people are walk it just feels like people are walking in life and they just accept that life is just life as opposed to life has been given to us. And there's this God given, like we are living in a miraculous time and it's been given to us. Like take advantage of it. Don't, I mean, I realize comedians are just, you know, they just kind of, they make jokes, but the idea that, you don't like the idea of God being the name mystery, of the blanket? The mystery, yeah. To give a shape to blanket. the mystery? Blanket. How do you feel it's about- It's a metaphor, Jeff. No, I, right. But the idea of mystery, I, yet the mist. what do you guys see as the mystery in this world? Well, when you, you said, you said God created this, do you recognize that as a statement of faith or a statement of fact? Statement of fact. And so how can you back that up? With faith. (laughs) So I think that's where he's, Pete Holmes is weighing, like throwing his weight on that side of the thing where it's like, yes, I, I believe things and even I believe things. Oh, good. Yeah. But sorry, I'm playing Scott Scott there for a moment. But, uh, and it tickles me to know that Scott is never going to actually leave this podcast. No. He will be forever be referenced, and I'm, I'm okay we'll raise him from the dead, just like. But even Jesus. like, you, like this, like God created all this. That means something to you in a way that I think God created all this. But I would believe that and describe that in a different way than you. So the the fact, like, but you you your first reaction was a statement of fact, right. And so it's uncomfortable when we're talking about mystery. Right. Because when you walk down the path, at some point you'd be like, how did all this happen? How, how do we have lions running out in the wild? How do we have humans that seem to have a capacity greater than everything else on planet Earth? And there are scriptures that there are tellings of history and people uh, that were created um, and a world that was created and light and dark that was created. And how can you 
there's no way to defend the there's no way to defend that there isn't God and there's no way to defend there is God that would make everybody completely a hundred percent happy. Sure. But yeah. also you get to the point where like, well, if you cannot defend a hundred percent that there is no God, you can't def- you there's no way to defend that because ultimately, how the heck did we get here? Something had to be the creator of everything because we create things. No, oh, big bang. Right. Which either kind of, I think what you're saying though is either way, you you have to take a position of faith. You right. are you are taking a position of faith that God created something, or you're taking a position of faith that there is no God and and that wasn't created. Because to your point, like no one has perfect proof either direction. Right. But, which is the definition of taking a leap of faith. Sure. I I just take comfort in uh I worry less did uh, there, there's less mystery to me in terms of like did god create but you kind of touched on a little bit of like but there's how and why and all these like circumstances all of that is complex and unknowable and mysterious and i i am so i'm grateful that it is it doesn't mean that i don't want to like try to understand it more but the moment that I wrap my head around, I feel like I've said this many times. Like, Brain blows up. Or or I can, oh, cool. So now I understand it. So now God becomes very small. Right. And like. If you have all the yeah, answers. Yeah, I figured it out just like God did. And so then that's good. So the mystery part for me is I, I find some comfort in there. Maybe it's an escape. I don't know. Maybe there's an escape for me to like avoid trying to explain away hard things. No, not avoid. Embrace explaining away hard things <laughs> instead of trying to wrestle with them. Right. The, the mystery, I've been wrestling with this recently, just thinking about, I mean, in my own thoughts of like the why or the really the why, like what do, is this? Is there a, literally a spiritual battle? Is Was God, was God, is there something going on, obviously, in my mind, there's something going on outside of what we can see that I have no idea what it is, but we're, I feel like it trivializes us, and I, I'm not doing that, that we're pawns. Like, who will see it? Who will know, like... What is it? The, uh, that God is created everything and also there is a spiritual battle going on that we we can sense if we're really present praying we're in it we're not just floating along like chasing things that are worldly things but when you really get in it you're like okay something is happening here but i can't i cannot put my finger on it but i know there is some there's like the Holy Spirit, the the there's a battle, there's a war, and it's happening because I I'm sensing it. It's happening to other people. People are going through torment throughout their lives, and and it's not something that we've just created from thin air. It's there, and you know it's oh it's that the devil is fighting against us, and it's like. God is for us and like where is that and people find it like that path of righteousness and the path of just like I will cut through the devil uh and that spiritual battle cuz millions of people in the world are know that there is something going on but nobody can quite put their finger on it but they know it's happening it's like an un it's an you it's you can say it's a mystery but i, I doubt that now more than i ever have in my whole life really you yeah. think it's inconsequential like ah whatever no i i i i doubt now more than i ever have that god is actively doing things in the world I love that, not that 
I agree or disagree, but I just love that you just shared that. That that's magic. So I kind of think of it as uh, if you think of uh, the a pinball, like the the game, the pinball, uh, little pinballs sitting in slots that will be opened, and when we come to it, like mm-hmm. God has set everything into play. But only when we actually engage in things will those the ball be put into play and start rolling to his to God's advantage, to our advantage, in a way that just creates momentum that kind of obliterates the the bad. Is there still chance in this metaphor beyond chance? God's control? Beyond God? No. Like God, if long as, because that comes down to like being on that path. Like if you're not there, then you will not, you'll not be able to engage in what God wants for you and wants for us as a people. And that's why I was kind of like the pawns thing is like, he wants us to be in it because there's so much greatness in it. And and for other people to see it, um, that they would hopefully engage in in this. I think more and more, my personal experience has been closer to like what the deists would describe as the absent clock ma- clock maker. That God uh, created the world, set it in motion, and then. Uh, retired and so there's all these really good things that we can do that that we've described that we can follow but um i don't know if i can say that i feel strongly that i i see and experience god active in the world i think i've it's easier for me to now start to explain that away i'm not saying that god doesn't exist i'm not saying that god didn't that the bible isn't true i'm not saying any of those things I'm just saying it's easier now for me to to doubt that God, I don't think God is active in this. Clearly he's not active in the same way that he was active in the Bible. Like that's easy to see. That's not controversial. We're not seeing people call down flames from heaven to in, burn in up. Our, yeah. In our little slice of the cosmos, time and space, we, we can't see that, or at least we can't know that. Um, and Jeff, you said something about like, we're not just making this up, like, but in a sense, making stuff up out of thin air. If you study, if you study the devil, like the development of the idea of the devil and Satan and spiritual warfare and such, there is a progression. Um, you have stuff earlier in the Bible where God is doing all the good stuff and all the bad stuff agents of the Lord are doing the terrible stuff to people. And as time goes on, the development of the idea of like, no, there's an opposition and, and it, it develops. And we've been given something in our cultural context, all of us kind of growing up generally um, Christian or evangelical. I know Jeff, you grew up Catholic or a Catholic adjacent. Right. Um, and then became a Christian and, and more the evangelical thread. Uh, and so we've just been swimming in this ocean, but, and we're just kind of taught to read the Bible at, at face value. Like, no, that that's what happened. But if you pay attention to it, like there's a development of the idea of sa- what, what Satan is and starting as just an idea or anybody that's an accuser is the, the Satan mm-hmm. um, to a personified in the new Testament, you get more uh, like of a personal touch, like it's an actual thing. Um, and so it developed. And so those ideas are continuing to develop today. I, I, and c- confession, you could probably tell if you're a, a new listener, like I, I don't look at the Bible as like speaking in, it's speaking in its time in those various times. It wasn't like a one-time deal. It was like created over time and edited and multiple writers and, it's a very human process. Um, 
And so there, there is this development and trajectory of the idea of a devil or a spiritual warfare and whatnot. And uh, so I don't know how that plays in to what you're thinking, Andy, because I, I'm with you. Like if you just, if you're honest about the evidence, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of like direct interactions of like, no, God's going to do this. And that's why I, I struggle with prayer, interceding type prayers is. That's probably why I like, I went back and looked at it and like, apologies, listener. I feel like I've been a bit of a, like a uh, broken record. There's a few times that I've brought up the, like, how do we, how do we see God enacting justice in the world? And maybe that's what it really comes down to. Cause you're wrestling with it. Cause I'm like, well, I don't see it. I'm not experiencing it. And, and, that's why it's easier for me to see God as the, the absent clockmaker who set things in motion. And now it's up to us. And in some ways he like kind of describes that he's like, okay, guys, you now go do this stuff. Right. Yeah. Jesus is like, it's, it's up to you. I'm handing it off to you. The church is supposed to be the embodiment and, and that's good. I don't know how the Holy spirit fits into all of that. I don't, that, that part is a little mysterious and, and I, sometimes we'll admit, I don't know if it's like, did I, is it lack of sleep or the Holy spirit that is affecting me today? But, um, but those are, those are hard things for me. Cause I, I, I find it more difficult to point to things with certainty that I'm like, Oh, clearly God did this versus, well, people were inspired by God to do those things. Yeah. Is there a difference? I don't, maybe, maybe there isn't a difference there. Right. We had a recent example of somebody on the the worship team at the church we all go to where sharing something where um, somebody I don't know, it was somebody describing a person that found like was feeling their body and found something that like didn't feel right and went to the doctor like, oh yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't feel right or look right. Let's do some more workups and then like lots of prayer and whatnot. They w- went back for, the, the major scan or whatever, and it was gone. And it, just attributing that to like, oh, we, we prayed for it and it was gone. Maybe. And I'm, I'm so pumped for that individual. But having lost a child for which I was in a, the headspace of like, God can heal this child and make this child better. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Like forever, I think I'm tainted. And I'm not saying it, it's one way or the other. I just, there's no part of me that can just be like, Oh yeah, God definitely took that lump away. Like I just will always have that giant question mark. That's why I, that's a big part of what I struggle with is because there's no because there is no formula there then if I'm going to attribute the times where it seems like God stepped in and changed and and healed the thing then then what will I do for the times that God doesn't? Will I blame him for that? Right. Cause if I give them the credit, I mean it's it's the the baseball player is getting up to bat. If he hits a home run, we credit it with him or to him. If he strikes out, do we not credit it? Like so how, how do we how the do we pitcher, choose to do that? The pitcher was just close to God. <laughs> a little <laughs> bit closer. Extra prayers that morning. It, it's almost what's important to God. And I realize you're just using an example of baseball, which, you know, really doesn't matter. It's almost the response to like striking out or succeeding or failing. It's like, how, how are you demonstrating what it is to be like Jesus on, on earth? And I think that's adjacent to what I'm saying now. Really? Being humble. Yeah. Because it's not, I'm talking about what is God's role, not yours. But God's, but God is in that. I see God in that, and that things are now set into motion. Like you have a choice. You have the, someone could be just lights out on fire athlete, phenomenal, and is so humble that it. And they may be God was the Christian. God was the batter in my analogy, by the way, not us. But the that might be changing. Okay. Okay. So if I if I'm going to credit God with hitting the home run, then do I also punish or or blame God for his strikeout? Not us. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I'm okay I'm okay with us being inspired by God to do great. I don't have a problem with that. 
I'm coming down to like, I don't know if I see God working actively in the world anymore. I don't know. I don't know if I can point to that. Oh, you can't point to it. You don't see I'm not it. speaking to any, for anybody else. I'm just talking about myself. That, that's where this all started. I, I, think with you, the, I think you can see it. I think people have lenses they look through. If you have a really firm belief in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you're speaking in tongues on Sundays and or whatever day, and you're praying for healing and you see healing, and then when healing doesn't come, because ultimately everybody dies, uh, when healing doesn't come, it's just like you rely on, well, there's a plan. And so it's kind of a heads I win, tails I lose. Now it might be there might be a version of that that's true. I'm just I don't look through that lens right now. But so that and I know a lot of people at our church, like the beauty of our church is there are people like all of us, and the three of us are different. On this particular page, Andy and I might be more similar, but the the guy that was speaking on on Sunday was talking about stuff in a way that I I believe he he's being a hundred percent authentic, and I believe him, and I love him, and I'm just not in the same space where he's yeah. talking about the the prayer and the spiritual warfare and stuff like that. And if you, I believe the human ability to like if you believe something is true and this is the way reality works, you will fit the actual data into that template, not the other way around. I mean, you can find examples of like ancient tribes, like the witch doctors and whatever doing ceremonies and freeing people that are, that have spirits, like what's going on there? Is that actual genuine healing? I don't know, but I think they believed it was, and the person believed it was, and and you can find examples of, of that sort of stuff. So I think there is a, there is an absolute truth on the reality of the way things are going. Um, we just have veiled lenses, but I think when you believe something is true or this is the way the world works, you will fit the data into that to confirm that. Um, and I'm just in a place right now where it's like that happens less and less where I'm like, I, I it's not that I'm like wishy-washy or whatever. It's just like, okay, what what's actually true? I don't know. So let, let me be open to the possibilities. And so that, you know, obviously that was all triggered by traumatic events in the past. But if you believe God heals and you will find examples of healing. And you're also, if you're honest, you're going to find examples where the healing didn't happen and you're going to put that into your template. Which gets so arbitrary for me, which is why I'm like, okay, so now I'm catching myself stacking the deck the way that I want it to be stacked. And do you think, do you think if like, what are we saying about God? Cause I, I know there's been times where stressful events happened, even with my more current template that I'm in, where I found myself praying in an old school way that I generally don't do because I'm uncomfortable with it or I'm not, I don't feel authentic when I do it. But I find myself reverting to my foundation, the way I was brought up. Do you think if if God is real and cares about us personally, do you think he's like, well, your your heart's not really in it, so I'm going to ignore that prayer. like? Is that a thing? I don't, uh, my reaction to that is that either way, he's not doing, he's not, uh, air quotes, doing anything about it. Well, that's how you feel. And I, and I believe that. But if God, that's what I said. And I, yeah. And I believe. <laughs> that's like your opinion, man. And I believe if yeah. you're in line with what God wants in this world, that it will happen. And and it may be to and some things won't go our way, but ultimately, but then it didn't there's happen. A shape, there's a shaping of who maybe you are as a person and what your impact is moving forward. It does more. And this I'm just throwing things out there. It does the impact of something you are praying for doesn't happen but it shapes you as a person, which ends up impacting exponential amounts of people in the world, God's people that grabs them enough to have them or some of them become believers. And that just, what is God's role in that? That's that's my problem. Yeah, but I, I brought that. You don't believe that there's something actively happening from God 
And I believe the Holy Spirit has been placed on us, but it's been put on us to sense and know directions and things to be said, places to go, people to talk to. And in that is God's active role in our lives. I, I, mm. I without a doubt, I know that in my soul that that is happening in the world. I just think mm. back to my, so I have four children, but it was, it was in a moment of like my greatest greatness of like feeling so close to God that I would walk into my children's rooms and I would pray over them. Mm. And, but the only kid that's terrible. I'm like emotional. The only kid I would put a hand on was my oldest son. And I don't know why, but he would be teary eyed. Um, if he was awake and I'd be praying over him and I'd be like, are you okay? He's like, yeah. And, um, did not do that with any of my other kids. I mean, I, I, I laid hands on my kids and, and prayed, but it was my oldest son that I did that with. And mm-hmm. I'm like, something in that, um, sorry, something in that. If you apologize once more, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> it, something happened. Because of of my kids, I don't know what will happen in the future. I mean, my girls or my youngest boy, they may go off and do amazing things for the Lord. But I see it in my oldest. <sighs> and I'm like, there's something, <clears throat> man, there's something that aligned with wherever I was and wherever God was, wherever the Holy Spirit was, that it was just put onto my son of the holy life. And I'm, I'm starting to see that play out in such a good way. So I, uh, in a way that is different than your other kids. Yes, but my my oldest son is obviously, you know, he's he's a few years ahead of my my oldest daughter and and she seems to be just kind of fighting. And my my third child is like, ah, and my last is like he he's just he's kind of the wild card and he may do the most <laughs> I mean, for all I know, he may do the most damage to the devil. He, he just, there's something, he has like a gravitational force. But my oldest son, there's something that, and I, I told this to Andy a, a few days ago, like this is, he, he's, his stature is, he's five foot five, five foot six. I have he's just, he, he's a young man that is like, I would assume is like David, that he, he he just you know Goliath David I mean and and I remember being uh, at a, a a football awards banquet we go to like a perennial powerhouse for sports and he was on the freshman football team and they had awards and stuff and this is like four or five years ago and and he he barely played um because he just he's not I mean he's a good athlete but he's not big and so. When the awards came, they were doing on individual awards and they did, you know, everybody gets something. And when it came to him, there was the, there was like this huge eruption. Like, what is going on? Like, why? Like, what is it about my kid that, there is this gravitational force. Mm. I didn't understand it. I still don't today. I'm like, why are people 
like enthralled, excited about uh, my boy. Because that was the, like, going through the entire, the entire, like, um, award ceremony. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then when Christian came up, it was like, I was like, what? I looked at my wife. I'm like, what is happening? Why? (laughs) Who's our kid? And, And now he's at the church and he's become a leader, a youth leader recently. And he's brought his friend in and he's a part, you know, there's like some young guys that are a part of this. And like three weeks ago, I'm like, Oh, how many people were there? And he's like, Oh, there was one kid. And then the next week I'm like, Oh yeah. How many kids were there with you? And he's like, there was four. And then this last week I'm like, how many kids were there? He's like, there was like 10 or 12. And I'm like, it's, I can sense it. There's this like gravitational force that people are just drawn to. I have no idea what it is, but I, when I think back, sorry, this is so long. I, when I think back, I'm like, which is why I believe when you, God has set things in motion. If you'll just engage things will start to, there'll be momentum going in that direction. And I can't get away from that thought because I've, I've lived it. I've seen it myself. And now I'm seeing it in my son. I'm like, there's something of greatness, God's greatness there happening. And I mean, I just think about our, our, the history of our church of, of brick who's there. Like there's a heart of, of somebody that, there's a gravitational force like it's in it. There's a Holy spirit. This is drawing people in. And I just, and the church has been drowning for three years. And so that's like, I love all of those things. Those things are all great. And in the same breath, it's not flourishing and churches nowhere in the U S are flourishing. I get that. That's an absolute statement. There are probably some somewhere we know that in general, they're not, and that's why, like, I don't disagree with you that, like, we as humans are inspired by God to do the things that God wants us to do. That's not where we, that, I, that I'm fine with that. And I love seeing Christian in those, in that role. And I think he's doing awesome. My, my point is that I don't see God actively stepping. I don't know where I can point to God actively stepping in. So I see it there. I mean, I, I'm like, wait, my kid's a leader? Or, e- even if it's just something like that's just happened, I'm like, S- there's millions of people in the world. I realize there's only so many people that have been at our church, but I'm like, he's there. And yeah. something's happening. I'm like, I see God active there. I don't see it as just like, oh, I'll take the job. I don't see it as that. I think there's there's momentum going in a direction that I'm like, this is this is happening. So do you do you think that I'm grateful that you shared all that? And I'm sorry. I it just no, I was no, had no, trouble. Apologize, I think you have to sorry, go, I did it again. You mm-hmm. have to go and you said sorry again, so I'm gonna I know. punch throw at you. Yeah. <laughs> throw punch you oh, oh sorry. Uh, ow. Damn. Um Do you think it would like the reason it's Christian and not your other kids is because you prayed over them differently? Because if, well, I'll just leave that question there. <laughs> that uh, I, I like they would have been like Christian. Blue. Attack. That's where I question whether it's almost like in my great, like feeling I'm so close to God, I will lay hands on Christian as opposed, like it is it, it, more than anybody else. And I don't know if it's because he's the oldest, but I know that God was driving me to like motivate me to put hands on this kid. And no, the, I know, I know. No, but I'm saying that in that that is where the Holy Spirit led me. It wasn't like, oh, that was the only kid. You, do you think God didn't want you to do that for your other kids? I think he definitely wanted me to do it for Christian. And that was active in my 
soul like put hands on this kid even though he's in tears right now because you're praying over him mm-hmm. put lay hands on him now do not back away from this that sounds good for all your kids though why wouldn't god want you to do that for all your kids and and i have but not in a way that it did with him and i'm like is it because there's this path that he's on he's okay, i could think about this in my head like oh he's first born he's gonna lead he's gonna have some skills in that regard and as opposed to like second or third child um and because you're forced as a first child to to lead and take ownership of things and kind of be the strong person in the decision making and stuff so I realize that the like the, yeah. the end result of this right. d- dialogue will never we won't have yeah. an answer. No, we at won't the, at the end of this, and it's I, it's still I, it's still awesome. It's great. Which Christian is why is this fantastic. podcast is not going to end. It, it yeah. will never end. And no. I don't not this episode, just in general. It's I don't going forever. I don't think when Jeff dies, Christian is going to take his seat. Uh, the reg- like I don't have regrets on not doing the same with my other children, but I I'm like why didn't I? Was I in a different place? Was I not really present with God? I don't know, but I do know that in the in the in the time that I was there with with my oldest son, yeah, that makes sense. That happened. You get it. So, and I like, I believe God was actively working in me to inspire me to do that, mm. and. Because it was what was needed to be done in that moment. That makes sense. Jeff, um, do you need to leave? I do. Okay. Well, we can let you out of here. I kind of want to finish this clip. If I play a, a, no, a play, minute I'll, or two. I, no, I got it. I, I got kind of feel s- like you're going to like his exclamation point, And I had to struggle to say yeah, that yeah. because I've said that so wrong many times before. <laughs> his explanation point. But it doesn't matter. If you're an atheist or a theist, I actually think we're all kind of in the same boat. Really, I do. Some people think God created the universe. Some people think nothing created the universe, which is the funniest guess. (laughs) And the nothing people make fun of the God people. They say God doesn't exist. I'm like, okay, maybe. But you know what definitely doesn't exist? Nothing. (laughs) That's the defining characteristic of nothing is that it doesn't exist. So what are we talking about? Either you think it's God, something you can't see, touch, taste, photograph, and science can't prove, or you think it's nothing, something you can't see, touch, taste, photograph, and science can't prove. But I think we can all agree, if nothing, if your nothing sometimes spontaneously erupts into everything, that's a pretty goddamn magical fucking nothing, you guys. (laughs) And ask, ask the nothing people, what happens when you die? They'll tell you, nothing. You go into nothing. I'm like, you mean you merge back with your creator? (laughs) That's heaven, bitch. (laughs) So no one, no matter what you believe, you shouldn't be afraid to die. Because if you go into nothing, and one of the things nothing does is explode into everything, nothing isn't the end. It's just a pit stop on the way to a new beginning. Let's pray. Heavenly so, Father. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you sent that. I do remember uh, watching that, listening to it. And it's fun to think about. Like the scientists can't prove or disprove <laughs> the existence of God. And it's uh, it's a fun comedy uh you don't have bit. to say words about it if you don't want to. No, we don't need you to summarize. I it. liked it because <laughs> I remember seeing it. I'm like, oh, this this is smart. I know it. It makes for me. It, it's it. It really it tickles me. Um, I know for a lot of Christians that are very concerned about like afterlife eternality, it's it would be offensive because it's like, oh, Yo, you're just telling people like enjoy it either way. Um, but it's again, it's like, what does it say? Say about God, we can't prove anything. That's why we oftentimes teach our kids and and get taught, as I did growing up, is like, no, the Bible is the word of God and it teaches these specific things. 
And you know those because they come from the Bible. And so it ends up being a circular proof to prove something you can't actually prove. Right. Um, but it's endlessly fascinating to dig into all these things. Like I'm not done with that. Like I, I feel like I'm just getting started with like learning about the Bible and all that stuff. But I re- I want to throw, I recognize like for people like Scott or people that care about eternal consequences or whatnot, what does it say about God that something you can't prove there's eternal consequences for one way or the other. It, it's at least worthy of a conversation. Like is, does God, care in that way or is there something bigger going on and what does reconciliation to God and to each other mean in the midst of all that which is a huge conversation which is also why this podcast will never end yeah it was um, it was really helpful to me a few years ago when um, Jeff feel free to leave at any point in time I feel bad like, oh, you yeah. actually feel, have to go like yeah you, Jeff has a meeting just, for the listener just get up and walk it's out in the, it's an AA you meeting <laughs> <laughs> okay, I should probably go. Okay. <laughs> the the concept when it was Love you guys. Love you too, dude. Love you. Thanks the, for crying and only apologizing once. Uh the renewal of the heavens and like uh the renewal of the earth as that that's what the better description of heaven was for me. Um it just never sat right. Otherwise, I I kept being like, wait, something is not calculating here why would God care so much about creation to just like toss it aside eventually and just go, right. Right. Reset versus like healing what he'd created. Right. And that made a lot more sense. And it was actually the, uh, I think it was the Bible project. Those guys have a really great, their stuff is awesome. Look up the Bible project. um, Yeah. People it's legit. And maybe some of the best production I've seen Christians do. And exploring, honestly, like the complexities, like trying to simplify things, but also being honest about these things are complex. Which I think is the highest order of genius if you are able to take really complicated things and break them down in ways that people can actually try to start to wrap their heads around. Um, and I was glad that Jeff was able to share that stuff. Um, and that's his. It's Jeff's experience. That's Jeff's experience, and it's good. And I and I love that he has that experience. Um, and maybe I'm coming at the tail end of like, you know, we've got three terrible years in the world in a row, and it doesn't seem to be getting much better. Right. And I know it's the gratitude season. I'm supposed to be feeling grateful about things, and I am grateful about things. Yeah. But it it's it's full circle tied into exposure to so much more because of the internet like it doesn't look better it's it's a constant doomsday but that's what sells clicks and views right and what i love about you can't argue with the conclusion up to this point the fruit of jeff's story it's you can quibble with like what is the reason for that you know jeff and tanya have a lot of charisma and life and they have a spark about them that played a role in this. Like it was it divine. Like the fact that Jeff laid hands on him, like that's why this is working. Cause I, I promise you there are pastors kids that are now atheists that had hands laid on them. Um, and people who had hands laid on them that weren't healed. Like right, this, right. Is, this is why I'm it's like the complexity of life. There's not a, it's not a formula. Um, but either way, it's like the, like I'm not denying that experience and I, I don't know. I don't know the ultimate reality of things. So when healing takes place, I accept it and I include it in wherever I'm at. Like, yeah, that happened. And I'm glad that happened. Healing's the easier one for us to like poke at. Right. But we use this, like we use this formula in our, in our lives all the time. And it's, Hey, we're traveling. Lord, keep us safe. Traveling mercies. Like, yeah. does that mean it worked? Did it work? It, it works until it doesn't. And so when it does, like, that's, that's where I, I, I'm sitting here looking at this, and I'm looking at being on the inside of a church for the last six, seven years now, and just like 
seeing so much stuff that's challenging and that's hard and that I'm like, how long, how long till I'm not saying that God, I'm not saying that I, that God doesn't do anything. I'm saying that I struggle to see the more obvious right. in a more obvious way, God active right in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, oh. I, it's fine for me if I'm just not looking in the right direction. And I think that's good and healthy. Not that you need to stay there, but um, there's a version of you where you feel confident, presumably at one point, in the other direction. Like this is new ish for you, right? Maybe a long time coming, but was there a point I where. I feel you, just worn down, maybe. Maybe. Um, maybe eventually yeah I just got to a point where you're like okay well the mistake would be like the mistake would be like okay I'm recognizing the data suggests something else and so throw throw out everything about what I used to believe and it sounds like you're sort of navigating I hesitate to use the word deconstruction because it's such a it's such a loaded word these days there's always in a, so many there's different some, ways. There's always some level, that but it we're feels like there's testing. a little bit of you're you're probing. Like, what do I actually believe? What what do I think is actually going on? And to, I think it is possible to do that without throwing whatever your baby Jesus is without the uh, out with the bathwater. Like it's yeah, and I'm not. I'm nowhere near that. I'm nowhere near throwing baby baby Jesus out with the bathwater. But what I, which is kind of why I tried to phrase it up Because even if you did, his halo would catch on the branch of a tree outside the window he just and he would be fine. flies with his baby Jesus wings. Yes. Um, that, and, that's why it's easier for me to, to look at this as uh, God is the, the um, absent clockmaker. God is real. God is the creator of all things. He established all all this great stuff, put things in motion and handed it off. Yeah. Which I think uh former guest, two time guest and maybe future guest. I know he'll come on if we just ask Tom Ord, Thomas Ord, Thomas J Ord, I believe the J may or may not be for Jesus, but well, you know, we'll see what, uh, open theism, open and rela- relational theology, which is more in the vein of like God God being love, love in its purest form literally can't control. And so if God sure. is that, what does that mean for our life? God God can maybe work in the world, but he can't control people. Um, so what does it look like to be somebody who believes? Just inspires, like I said. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Uh, <laughs> you know the rabbit the crazy thing is like the the fruit or the data also leads in the direction of people who have a re- robust prayer life and faith no matter what shape it takes they're they're generally happier and more healthy and so that that's a that's a causation correlation thing correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation but it's it's something I struggle with. It's like, yeah, like people, about, that, people that are total hardcore atheists with no mystery, like that's the way it is, generally are less happy than people that have a, a faith and a prayer life. In college, my friend had a stuffed animal that he named long suffering. <laughs> oh I don't even know what, I don't, I don't want to know what he did to that animal. <laughs> but <laughs> it's funny, but like, so long suffering plays into this and maybe is that, is that God hedging his bets in the Bible? Hey, uh, if I don't show up though, long suffering. Oh, we got it covered with that. You're just experiencing long suffering yeah. right now. What's one of the, uh, and righteousness shall be added unto you. What's one of the, you know, the first third of the fruits of the spirit. It's patience. Yeah. You, you know, it's in there. Wait for it. Hey, you're not being patient. Display that fruit of the spirit better. Come on. Be patient. Things are happening the way you want. Long suffering. Yeah. 
Um, I had a little clip that I was going to play since we're, this is like a, a combination of, um, what are you consuming and, uh, do it, share it. This is, this is what you're consuming. This is one of my of- new favorite comics. It's also stand up comedy on Netflix. Comedy. Comedy. It's Ralph Barbosa. He was just on, uh, Rogan the other day, but this is his, uh, Netflix special Cowabunga. Man, she's cool, man. She's cool. Her family's real religious. My girlfriend always wants us to pray before we eat so that we can show that we're thankful for things, you know? Which I agree. I'll pray for things I'm thankful for. I don't want to pray before every meal, but I'll pray before things that I'm really thankful for, like (laughs) sex. (laughs) She's like, you're more thankful for sex than for food? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I mean... uh, I never went six months without eating before. (laughs) I didn't starve through high school. She wants us to go to church, but I don't even know... If I'm that religious like that, I'm one of those people, like, I believe in God, but I don't go to church, you know? I think there's a lot of us like that, that we believe that we don't have to go to church, but as long as we're just good enough, God will still let us into heaven. (laughs) Yeah, because in my mind, God is like those police captains in the movies. He's like, "Mm, you don't play it by the book, but you're a good detective, goddammit, you're in. (laughs) I'm just at the gates like, thanks, chief. <laughs> I just I just don't like going to church, man. I don't like the people there. People at church have, like, co-worker vibes. <laughs> <laughs> like, some of them are cool, but most of them, you know, they're just being fake nice because they want that promotion. <laughs> never liked the people at the churches that I've gone to, man. Like, if those are the people that are going to be hanging out in heaven, I just, I just go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so honest and uh, oftentimes true. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that he describes it as co-worker vibes. People at church, they got, like, major co-worker vibes. Oh, you know that more than most right now. Oof. Yes. Which is a can of worms we don't need to open now, but it's okay. I, is it, I don't even think it. As we'll we'll probably land this and yeah. a little. What are you consuming? But I don't even know if it's possible to have a version of what we do as church where that's not going to be the case at least part of the time. Like c- churches want to c- create a culture of authenticity for very good reasons, but I think ours does. I don't know if all of them do. Ours speak. does, but even even so, there's a hundred percent. There's Sunday morning. There's church face. Like when you show up, like it. I do it all I'm, the time. I'm guilty of it. Yeah, I don't know if you can avoid that. The only way to I'm not doing do it that, right now. <laughs> you don't like me that much. Uh, it's good to see you. How are things? Such a pleasure. Oh, mutual. I'm sure. How are the kids? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you get the small groups where you can be really vulnerable and honest. That's that's where that's gonna happen. Yeah, and even then, you have to like spend some time, and it doesn't require alcohol. But sometimes, if you have a drink or two, and and you know and trust the people, it's really trust. Like whatever gets to the trust place, I can trust this person a hundred percent. It is the lubrication of trust. Um, alcohol. Up to a point, and then it falls yeah, off quickly, then and then people, really quick people die and get punched and whatnot. But your mileage may vary. So yeah, I mean, yeah, try churches, try to be authentic. It's so hard. Yeah, it's hard. lay down the coworker vibes every That's once true. in a while. Like it, it's a version of telephone voice. <laughs> Don't use your phone voice on me, bitch. Yeah. yeah. I did like, by the way, I forgot to mention it, uh, that he ends that little 
Pete Holmes ends that little se- session with, that's heaven, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to go back. I, I started to watch that. He has a evangelical background. Oh, yeah. He grew up like us. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's wild to see, you know, he's just on this journey and he strikes me as somebody that he's out there spiritually. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. He's somebody that I know is like seeking what's actually real in life. And I love that. Yeah. It's- I like I value that about people no matter no matter where it takes them, when you're doing that authentically, it's like boom, that's that's where the rub is because you're open to change. Like I'm open to change. I'm not like sure. settled in as shout out to uh Nate, he knows who he is. Uh, just a joking conversation backstage in between worship sets where he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm good being conservative. You can keep your progressivism or whatever." Because we the things came up or whatever. Yeah, uh, the details aren't important, but it's like, yeah, I, I he's an authentic dude that I love. That's in a spot that's different than me. Mm-hmm. I it's a good reminder having people in, in my life like that is a good reminder to conserve what's good. Don't sure. don't throw like we said, don't throw it out with the bathwater and progress. Test things. Where do things need to be knocked down? Where does your theology need to progress? Cuz definitionally if everything always remained orthodox, we wouldn't be where we are today. You need some heterodox. But, yes. But in a healthy way. And and it, it is always changing. We're in the river of theology. Zach, get and into we're the flow, flowing down the river of theology. I feel like we're in the flow together right now. Maybe we are in the flow. Hopefully. Besides that comic, um, what are you consuming? I'm reading this book called "The Hard Thing About Hard Things" by Ben Horowitz, who is half of the Andreessen Horowitz um, mega venture capitals. They like invented Netscape and then a bunch of the internet and most of Silicon Valley. It's really good. Whoa. It's really good. It's also um, there was one there was one chapter in there that like called out some bad habits um, in people who do my job, and uh, and it was convicting. <laughs> mm. I I had some of the good habits too, but the, it called out the good habits and bad habits, and some of the bad habits. I was like, oh, I did that. Oh, I do that. Can you give me an example? Of a um, bad habit? yes. Uh, well, a bad habit is like regardless of what happens. Um, sorry, the good hab, the good version of it would be regardless of what happens, you take responsibility. And I think I've caught myself. I've had a weird, I've had a weird year at work. Um, and definitely own lots of the things that have been weird about it. Um, but I think I found myself getting in a place where I was also just, uh, being okay with pointing out the weirdness that I felt like was out out of my control. His point was like, at the end of the day, like, uh, don't be a person who just lets things happen to them. I think is really what he's trying to get to. So, but that's a, another can of worms. Anyway, okay. the, the hard thing about hard things, it's, it's really good. And it's, uh, it's also a roller coaster ride. Cause he talks about all of his startups and being like, inches away from closing the doors and then landing a new like influx of cash at the 11th hour and being able to retain people and like pull things out of nowhere. It's, it's exhausting, like stressful. Some of the chapters you're like, dude, you get done with it. You're like, Oh, uh, I need to relax. This is, this is too much. Um, but I'm reading that. And then one other book that I'm, uh, start, I'm going to be starting is called, buy versus build and it's talking about um uh purchasing businesses versus like trying to start them from scratch nice which is maybe a small view into your brain right now yes maybe 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 looking for uh, future state off ramps, but everyone should be doing that. Like, yeah, constantly. Yeah, diversify, man. Well, you're just gonna keep all your. I mean, it's tech industry is questionable. It's all flighty these days. Yeah. So have backup plans. Yeah. All right. Well. So, 
Are you tired of Zionist chills? Or are you, are you sick of dirty, evil Hamas supporters? <laughs> then the Martyr Made podcast is for you. Uh, is that the description? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then how about listen to somebody that has been accused of being both? Nice. Uh, Daryl Cooper, Martyr Made, like martyr, as in being being killed for a righteous cause. Martyr made podcast, Daryl Cooper. I think he was in the Navy and Navy intelligence, but he's kind of a historian. Um, I don't totally know his background, but he has an incredible history of the Israel situation. Now this is historical. It's not, if, if you're somebody that is looking for a Bible podcast about why Israel is right all the time, this is the wrong one, but it's worth listening to. It's, it is like a free audiobook. It's uh I don't know, four or five parts, six parts. Oh, seven parts. Uh um, right, I got seven parts going out. We got yep. eight parts ahead coming up. Eight parts. I gotta go. Six eight, so parts. So that's six parts. His podcast is a lot of history, but he does have a five or six part series on it's called Fear and Loathing in the New Jerusalem. And each episode is like four or five hours long. And so you end up with a free audiobook on a historian's take on Jerusalem and Israel and Palestine and all of that stuff. And so I've I've had videos shared with me from um uh Ben Shapiro and who's the other Prager. Prager you about how like oh the truth is like Israel wants peace and they want Israel dead. I'm like, no, nope, it's a little more complex than that. Um, and so it's, it's worth your time if you care about that sort of thing. And he, the, the fact that he gets accused of being a shill for Zionists and also he's a Hamas terrorist supporter, it's perfect. Like that is right in my wheelhouse. It's like, doesn't mean he's right all the time, but he's somebody that's like trying to like what actually happened. It's complex and put his, thrust is put yourself in the shoes of these people on all sides and you will see that solving this is a real bitch like this is but it's worth your time and then that's the the podcast i've been listening to and then uh, a book i've been reading is kind of some of the stuff we're talking about with like does the bible say it what does the bible mean um and why is that right or not right the Bible Made Impossible by Christian Smith, who is an actual Christian. Uh, why Biblicism is not tr- a truly evangelical reading of Scripture, and it just it just breaks down like why the idea of the Bible solving things like the Bible said it or God said it, the Bible says it, that settles it, or whatever the bumper sticker you've seen. Uh, it just explains how that it's just not it's not a tenable position. So what do we do going forward? Like the reason there are so many interpretations of the Bible is because it isn't as settled and we are far enough removed from original texts and all that stuff. You mean like it doesn't actually say that the snake was Satan in the garden? It says that that is one interpretation. And, but, uh, and the point isn't, I feel my, my past self being like, Oh, just throw it all out. Then that's not the point. You're missing the point. If it's like it has to be 100% true according to your understanding or you throw it all out, you're doing it wrong. And this this book is uh, a good, helpful tool in recognizing that. Just compare the birth narratives of Jesus and the crucifixion narratives of Jesus on your own with your translation of the Bible and just realize like there are different details that don't actually line up. And that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Mark had somebody to say, or the writer of Mark had somebody to say that the, the writer of John had somebody to say different. They all had reasons for this, and that's okay. They were human beings. And also, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John weren't actually writers of those Gospels, but that's a different conversation. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh feels like this is a good place for us to wrap yeah, it up. What do you think? I think so. Should we call it a day? It was refreshing. And then we'll see. We'll see if this ends up on YouTube. Yeah. But either way, it's going out there. And people will hear it. 
It's good to be back in the saddle. Thank you for inviting us into your home, Andy. I know. I'm glad it worked. The worldwide studios of Bros Bibles and Beer Incorporated. Limited. Um, but I think people should let us know what they think because I know we said some things that could be triggering or might unearth some things. I think I triggered Jeff. A little bit. And um, see it. but that's okay. Like I, I love I the know. idea that uh I don't want to take where he's at away from him because it might be more correct than where I'm at currently. And that's okay. Transcend, but include. As the great Richard Rohr said. And that's that's a nugget for Carrie. Carrie hears that. He's going to be like, F Richard Rohr. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a beer, Carrie. Come on, man. For Zach, yeah. Jeff, and I'm Andy. This is Bros Bibles of Beer. Um, that's should- it. <laughs> Bros Bibles Beer at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. Well, we forgot to do all those things. And then, yeah, at Bros Bibles Beer on all the socials. The socials. Which and- we don't touch. So that's useless. No, we, we will get it. Will we get it? But we don't often post. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. want to reach out to us. Yeah, we'll we'll get it and we'll respond to it. There's no content on there. Hit us up, yeah. Yeah, That's hit us it. up. All yeah. of those things. There you go. And if you want to leave us a voicemail, we'll read... We'll, actually, should we just check and see? Did you look? Do we have any voicemails? <laughs> I haven't looked. Um, I feel like I looked the other day. I'll take a look right now. And you know, I'm going to take a look for uh, reviews on the... the uh, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah. And actually give us five stars on Spotify because we're there and we're waiting for another five star review. What I've or seen review, but... is um I, I don't want to start I don't want to start a podcast. Why not? It's, it's forcing me to start a podcast. Delete the recording. Did you, have... Nope. Voice messages. We have none. David Quaid Melton is the last one to have given us a... Gosh. That was April 14th. People, get it together. I want some voicemails. I don't want them now, but get keep them under a minute. Y'all. Oh, yeah. No new Apple reviews. It makes sense. We haven't posted in a while. Okay. People are afraid. If you want be, af- so- be not afraid. <laughs> Fear not. Fear not. For the reviews are with you, and if you review us, then more episodes will be with you as well as well all right and with you all right (laughs) grace peace cheers i'm too old for that chair oh yeah what's that mean